Hey, Service Nation, good to talk with you today. We're gonna go over something that I get here all the time and people get so confused on. We're gonna get you all cleared up today. So why is your website not working for your service-based business? Biz, <laughs> just so you guys know, I was trying to keep it a secret, but I think I'll just tell you. I'm feeling a little under the weather today, so I'm trying to keep my energy up and my command of the English language intact. So if I get a little nutty, uh, we just, we're gonna blame it. We're gonna blame it on the sickness. So um, you have a website, Maybe it makes a phone ring. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're in the, the crappy spot of not knowing if it makes a phone ring. You get a lot of calls and people say it's from the website, but you don't really know. Um, worst case is you get thousands of, of visitors, but they don't move forward or they don't make a call. You don't know. They don't, they don't, there's no process, right? You just got some sort of call now for a free estimate and then not a lot of people call. Um, the cost of this is if you don't have a repeatable, scalable, dependable system to attract customers, you can't control your company's growth. You can't control your company's financial security. And um, you're just really selling yourself short. So the problem is a lot of us successful business owners, we're successful because we hustle, hustle, hustle. We got shoe leather. We'll cold call. We'll do whatever it takes to make it work. Um, and we can have some success on that, but then we use that as, I don't want to say an excuse, but like an excuse to ourselves. Jessica in the house, good to see a sister. Oh, Jessica's here. She's going to be a guest on our, I believe our Grow My Cleaning Company podcast next week. And I am already getting excited about it. Um, so if you don't have that, you end up kind of either one of two things happens. Either you never grow or you grow based on like repeat and referral businesses, but you don't know how to scale. You can't do it on purpose, right? Sometimes they come, sometimes they can't, they don't. Frustrating is all get out. The other piece of that is um, if you are good at uh, attracting clients, that's awesome until, oh, wait a second. I don't think I started my, my live. Hold it. Holy crap. We are live here, but not on, oh, sorry, Instagram. Welcome to join us. Uh, we've been talking about how, why your website's not working for your service-based business. I forgot to go live with you. Sorry, my fault, Instagram. Um, and we talked about how your website might be bringing customers in, uh, people go to your website, but they don't move forward. There's no process. They don't call. We don't know how many people are calling, so we don't know how it's working. And the, the problem is if we don't have a repeatable, scalable system, that means either we don't grow on purpose or know how to grow or know what to do. Uh, sometimes people come in, but we don't know how or why or how to make it happen again. Or if we're really good at kind of hustling and working, um, maybe we can kind of grow our customer just based on cold calling or like going door to door, just kind of hard work. But the problem is we get successful for like a little bit and then it works. And now we're like, holy crap, we've got to hire and put in all these other systems that we need. And then we stop growing it and then the growth stops. And so we kind of end up going back and forth from, holy crap, I need customers. Work, 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 work. I get customers and you get customers like, holy crap, some, I got to hire some people and put together some systems and actually provide the service. And then we stop the client attraction process and go to that. And it just, it's just this juggling act uh, or the spinning plates act that does not work and doesn't grow. So we need a repeatable, dependable, scalable system that attracts the right customers no matter what you're doing um, to really have some financial security for your company. Let's talk about how to do that today. Um, as always, we've got to get rid of false beliefs. Those are what are going to eat your lunch. So the beliefs that we've got to crush and we'll replace them with actions and beliefs that are going to give you the right, the right system to get the result that you want is we have to move away from this confidence. And some people even brag, don't raise your hand if it's you, but you know who you are. Like all of my customers come from referrals or, you know, all my, that's all I do. I've never spent a nickel on advertising. Um, it's all repeat and referral. Great. Unless you want to scale on purpose or get customers on purpose or make goals and decide, I would like to grow by this much at this time. If all of your customers come by referral or repeat, there's really no way to, to, to do anything. Hey, Bobby, good to have you, buddy. Um, so the, the reality is, first of all, most of the time you don't know where your customers come from. So because you're not spending any money, you just assume repeat and referral. The truth is we need real, actual big boy, big girl tracking, right? If you don't have that set up, you don't know where your customers actually really come from. And we can only make... It's hard enough as owners to make good decisions all the time. We have no chance of we're flying blind with no data. So we got to get away from all my customers come from here. What that really means is I don't track and I'm guessing. So we, we've got to set up real tracking so we know where each customer comes from, especially if we want to set up most of the automated uh, things I'm teaching you happen from paid. Many of them come from paid, but if we don't know where they're coming from, we can't make a decision that ever going to grow. So not only do we have to kind of know what to do, but we need to know the data of what's working, what's not, so we can make good decisions. So we have to move from all my customers come from repeat and referral to I know exactly where my customers come from. And I'll tell you, guys, gals, how do I do that? The beautiful thing is 
people only come from a couple ways, right? They're going to email you. They're going to call you. They might fill out a form on a website. Um, that's typically it. The cool thing is with each one of those, you can track it, right? So you can have an email that you're like, Hey, if you want, um, you know, if you want this free thing or whatever your deal is, you can say, you know, say it's, it's a Facebook ad. Um, you could be like email Facebook at, at Steve's cleaning and you'll know any email that comes from that came from that ad, right? Same with phone numbers. You can have a specific phone number that you put on whatever ad that you're doing. So, you know, every person that calls that number came from that ad. So, in 2020, it is ridiculous to give any sort of excuse of, I don't have the ability to track, right? It's really, I just, I, I haven't, I saw a lot of times, I hate to say it, um, we don't want to track because we're afraid of the results, right? So we'd rather just suck and not know exactly how bad we're sucking. We're afraid to look at it. So if uh, we're here to make ourselves feel comfortable, that's a fine way to go. If we're here to grow a business, obviously, um, that is not going to work. All right. The next uh, thing we've got to crush is if I just put up a website, people will, will find me and call. Or if we're honest with ourselves, like, I don't know how people will find me, right? So we actually, that's probably, that belief we, we isn't the bad one. Because I think most people are, are getting over the, like, if I build it, they will come. They know just by having a website doesn't mean anyone's going to show up to it. And that's their frustration. So they're, the belief that they've got we got to kill is... I guess there's nothing I can do. I just put up my website and hope for the best. There's, there's really no way or it's just some sort of ma magical mysticism that's beyond me that, that makes it grow. Couldn't be further from the truth, right? We, we can control that. Um, and let me tell you part of how we do that. Um, once we get people to it and there's two ways and we go over, we've got so many different uh, resources at growmyservicecompany.com, but the two general ways to get people to your website is organic and paid, right? Organic is what I'm doing right now at the end of like, Hey, if you want more resource, I just did. If you want more resources, go to growmyservicecompany.com, right? People will watch this. Hopefully we give lots of value and then they'll go to growmyservicecompany.com uh, um, where we're not even selling anything yet. We're just right now putting value into the universe. So, um, and the second is paid, right? If I wanted to start selling something immediately with Grow My Service Company, I'd come up with a product and then I'd, uh, we've got a Facebook guy on staff, I would uh, have him start putting ads out uh, to Facebook, right? So paid and organic are the two quick ways. And this is a perfect example of organic as we speak. And we're going to turn this into a podcast. Uh, you, some of you might be listening to the podcast and a YouTube video. Uh, we'll take little snippets of it and put it on Instagram. You can share it as Twitter posts. Um, we'll probably have some right, we will have some right, probably an email on this. You can make it into a blog. So when you make content, you can kind of, uh, leverage it into lots of different contents and kind of uh, uh, reuse it, so to speak. And then you can also do paid. So that's how you get traffic to it. But you have to take control. Certainly, if you just put up a website, we hope people will just show up, but that's not the case. Um, the 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 ugly stepchild of that belief of if I just put people up, they'll come is if I just put people up and tell the world how great I am, they'll buy my stuff. Um, that you know, as well as I do, that rarely happens. And if it does happen, it happens in spite of you talking about how great you are, not because, right? So we've got to kill that belief of my website's job is to tell the world how great I am. And a lot of you are going, I know that's not what I have to do. That Don't be ridiculous, Mike. I'm not dumb. But if I went to your website and we did an IU count, this is one of the things that we have our clients do, an IU count in everything, your website, your emails, your, um, I was about to say brochures, so you know how old I am, that we used to have brochures. Um, your any speech that you do in any content that you put out for people, um, the I you count will kill you, right? So I promise you right now, if you go to your website and count the I, we, us, our, your company name, anything about you versus you or your talking about your customer, it's usually 10 to one about you. So even though the people go, I know I'm not supposed to do that. I guarantee you, I don't, I, I've done this enough times where we pull up their website and it's all about them, right? They think it's not go to your website, count the number of I, we, us, our, my, me, my, uh, you know, or your company name versus you or your. So we want to move away from putting, telling the world how great you are into really starting at the end and working our way backwards, right? So what it is that I want the visitors of this website to do, which we have, I want them to call or I want them to email. Or I want the call now for a free estimate. It puts right on the website, call now for a free estimate. The reality is we ask that question, what do we want? But we don't ask what do they want, right? So we know we want to have them call now for a free estimate, but we put, we don't put ourselves in their shoes, which is the first step of what we need to do. So their shoes would be something like, where are they? Right? Well, nowadays there's a 80% or more chance they're on their phone, right? So if they're on their phone uh, and you can get this breakdown, if you put in Google analytics, which is a free, uh, free deal, you can put on your website, you can get what percentage of traffic uh, to your website is via phone. It's, it has been increase, increasing significantly, uh, over the last five or 10 years. And it's well over 50% for just about every website now, certainly owners of service companies. So, um, they're probably on their phone. You probably do not have their full attention. 
um, and there's not a lot of ingesting they're going to do right then, right? So when we, you put call now for a free estimate, they do have their phone, so they could call right now, but they're just looking for information. Almost always they have a problem that they think they, that they think that you can help them solve. And what we want to do is demonstrate your ability to solve that problem without asking them for a lot of commitment. It's risk reward. Put yourself in their shoes. Do you, how many websites have you been to on your cell phone that said call now for a free estimate and you did not call, right? Probably 99% of them, but that's exactly what we do. How many websites, however, did you go to to solve a problem? And they said, here is a small way to solve that problem for you, right? Like, um, right here, right? You are probably, uh, if you're watching this on my website or through something like that, you were searching to solve a problem. How do I get a website that works? And this came up and we're going to give as much value as we can and then go, Hey, if you want more, go to growmyservicecompany.com. And then once you've been, I don't want to say exposed, but once you've kind of gotten some value, then we can ask you to take the next step. So <laughs> Cecilia says, wow, good stuff. So glad that you're getting value sister. So we want to make sure that we are giving value and we are asking the right thing at the right time. So again, call now for a free estimate to a website visitor that just maybe saw something or we don't know how they got there, but they, they don't know anything about you or your company. It's like going up to a girl in the bar and be like, hey, let's get out of here, right? It's creepy. It's weird. No one's going to say, well, very few are going to say yes. And the people who say yes aren't the one that you want to spend time with, I'm thinking. Um, so the reality is your job is to put your prospect in a funnel and move them along a predetermined process, right? If I was going to talk to a girl at church or at a bar or wherever, I might say, um, Hey, can I talk with you for a little bit? Can I spend some time with you? Can we chat? Tell me about your family. Can I, can I, depending on the location, can I buy your drink or can I sit here or whatever? And then after we talk and have a good time, I might say, Hey, can I get your info? You know, can I give you a, a call later? Can I text you? Whatever the case may be. And it's kind of a natural progression, but when we get to marketing, we think we can just all of a sudden start at like step nine, right? So all that to say your job is your website's job is not to, to tell the world how great you are or try to try to make the entire sale right there because it's, it's too much. Your job is to put them into a funnel, maybe get their phone number, maybe get their email address so you can call or text them later with more value, right? So you still wouldn't go to the girl in the bar and go, hey, let's get out of here uh, or come home and meet my family. Um, and if you got her phone number, you wouldn't then text her and go, hey, want to come over and meet my family? You'd be normal. Be like, let's go get drinks. Let's have, a, let's have dinner. Let's spend some time together. I'm going to go do this. Come do it with me or whatever. Same thing with marketing, right? So we always want to get right to the call now for a free estimate without giving any value. So we want to move our website from telling the world how great we are. They don't care. Um, and then telling, saying call now for a free estimate without ever giving them an inch of value to giving a massive amount of value. And then the next logical step in that value process should be they pay you for your services, right? So if we've got an HVAC company and we're talking, you know, it could just be like, hey, call now for a free estimate. Or it could be, here's how to save money on your utility bills. Here's how to make your air conditioner last longer. Here's how to know when to call a, a, a service tech out. Here's how to know when you're getting screwed by a service tech. So you start giving all this value. Guess what? When they now need help, they're going to call you because you've got a relationship. You're giving them value, right? So we don't like that because it takes longer. But the cool thing is once you've been doing this for a while, the people from a year ago, six months ago, two days ago, they all come in faster. Even the ones that want to get help now with the process that the funnel doesn't have to take months. Although the problem is most of the time when someone comes to your website, 90% of them aren't looking to buy now. They're looking to solve a problem or get some sort of information or, or feel better about their choices. So we can, if we just start giving value, we'll serve them. And of course, the 10% that want to call now, we'll still give them some sort of call to action and get more involved. But you want to get the information from the people that aren't ready now. So you can still email them or text them or share a podcast you did with them or a podcast you saw someone else do with them and keep bringing value. So when they're ready to buy, they've got a friend in your business, right? As opposed to just going with a stranger. Um, so again, we've kind of beat to death the whole, your website's not there to tell the world how great you are. It's not there to tell uh, people to call now. It's there to get the right people to raise their hands and give you their information. So you know who to follow up with, right? So it takes the world at large, you know, Hey, I'm a, uh, landscaper and there's a million people in my service area, how do I market to them? I don't have the time or money to, you know, last month, 37 people opted in for some sort of landscaping information I had. I can focus all my time and effort just on those 37 people making their life great. I have time and money for that, not for the million, right? So the website moves from telling everybody to call now to getting the right people to raise their hand, give you their information so you can continue that conversation and follow up and give more value to them. 
Um, another thing that'll kill you and kind of keep you from, from having a website is it's got to look super professional and it's got to cost a lot of money. It's got to take a lot long time. We use mostly landing pages, which is just, we use click funnels. That's what we teach our folks. We love it. Uh, I've had Russell Brunson on uh, one of my podcasts before the owner click funnels and, or the founder. And, um, you can have a nice looking web page up in 20 minutes, right? It's not about how fancy it looks. It's about how effective it is at helping your, your people. So as opposed to moving to how can, and again, having it look fancy is more about you. I want to look good. I want to be, everyone has to know how great I am. They don't care about how great you are. They just want to know how much value that you can give them, right? So I'm not saying your website has to look bad. I'm just saying you got to be really clear on what result you want your website to have. And really it's to start building that relationship. And the focus should be on building that relationship, not trying to make yourself look good. So and kind of a, a part to that is a lot of people have this big effective, you know, they don't know who their client is. So they've got this big generalized website that just kind of speaks to the world, right? And they don't know who their clients are. Look at the power of this. We actually started with Grow My Cleaning Company, which is super specific. And now we're uh, we're trying to give value to the Grow My Service Company world, but we're being more specific, right? So people here, generally owners of service companies that want to grow. Um if I just said, hey, owners of companies, here's how to grow every company in, in all parts of the world, there's not really a lot of help I can give them, right? So same with you. If you're, you want to focus on, is it homeowners? Is it businesses? If it's homeowners, is it rich or poor? Is it people in this area or that area? Are they, are they married or single? Do they, uh, do they have kids or not kids? And you want to be able to speak to where they are in their life, right? So we try to be general, be like, hey, we sell air conditioning. Therefore, if you're hot, if you're hot and want to be cold or cold and want to be hot, call us. Well, that's not really helpful. If you're like, Hey, we help working families take care of their, you know, maintain their house and keep their family safe while they work. That's much more specific, right? So the reality is you need to speak specific pain to your specific prospect. And we can't know what that specific pain is. We don't know who our prospect is, right? A lot of people don't even know who our prospects are. So we just have to speak generally, right? Having served owners of cleaning companies, and those are obviously service companies as well. For years now, I know exactly what stresses you guys out in terms of I spent all this money and I've tried to get coaching before and it didn't work. And my family all thinks I'm crazy. And, you know, I left this really good paying job sometimes and now I can't do it. And I know that I was created for more. And I, I get stuck working in my business and I can't grow and I'm hitting it. There's all this pain that I'm able to communicate to you guys because all I do is talk to you guys day in, day out. So all of our websites are super specific to who you are and that's what we teach you to do. If you do this real general website with, um, you know, that just speaks to anybody, if you're speaking to everybody, you're not speaking to anybody, right? So you want to be as specific as possible. And if you're a more mature business and you've got two or three niches that you already serve and you do well with, then you want to have two or three specific websites, right? For us, we have the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast and website. We've got the Grow My Service Company podcast and website. And they're, they're separate because you guys are just a little bit different, right? So it's really important that you have um, specific, and this is not just your website. This is your emails, all of your messaging, podcasts, anything you do needs to be specifically to the pain of the person that you're talking to. And if you know what that pain is, you're going to have a really, really hard time bringing value to them, right? So the good news is once you get a system down, I know we've kind of covered a lot in a short amount of time, but I want to make sure you guys get some value here. Once you get the system down, you can create all the funnels, not websites, the funnels, right? Where people, whether you have a podcast that goes to a website or pay traffic that goes to a website and here, I'll give you the funnel that we've got right now. I'll give you two of them. One, you go to growmyservicecompany.com. I think it's going to say, Hey, join our free Facebook group. Well, guess what? A, you'll get some more value out of being in a Facebook group with other owners of service companies and B, if and when we want to give more service or, you know, guess where this, this broadcast we're doing now is going to be posted to, to the Facebook group, right? It might also say, get a free copy of my book. That's something I wrote uh, before and you can read it and be like, wow, this guy really knows what he's want. I want to reach out to him for coaching, right? So we're, this is a perfect example of a, of an organic funnel. You can also do a paid funnel the same thing. Hey, click here for a, a copy of Mike's book, you know, for free plus shipping or whatever the case may be. And that's another way to get into it. So once you get a system down, you can create all the funnels that you want speaking to specifically to that customer who's got that kind of pain and you can start attracting, not chasing. Hey, Nagib, good to have you, buddy. One of our uh, uh, coaches is in the house. So that's the beauty of Grow My Service or Grow My Service Company. I was looking at the website. So go to Grow My Service Company if you want all that sort of stuff. Um, that's the beauty of creating a funnel as you can kind of like this piece of content I'm making now I'm doing once and will hopefully continue give, giving value to the service uh, business owner community for months, if not years to come. That's what we want to teach you guys how to do. So if you want help for that right now, you can, um, you know, just reach out to me on Instagram, give me a direct message and just be like, Hey, I subscribed, I rated, I reviewed, um, and we'll get you a copy of my book or some sort of amazing gift to help you on your way. So that's it. Just 
shift. I'm going to give you a quick summary to make sure we've got it. Um, make sure that you understand your website isn't just a place for you to talk about how great you are. It's supposed to be the, the, the beginning of the funnel that people move from strangers to people that know, like, and trust you to people that reach out and want your help to customers. That's what needs to be. It needs to be scalable, repeatable, dependable. Um, you need to be able to track all that stuff. And then you need to be able to find a way to get people to do it. The way to get people to it is to spend money with paid, which we didn't really talk about today. Or um, content, just what we're doing now, right? I try to. I know that you guys want help figuring out how to get your, your website or, or online presence to make you some money. So we did some content and said, hey, if you want more, go to growmyservicecompany.com or just uh, shoot me a, a direct message on Instagram. We'll see if we can help you. So hopefully not only do we tell you how to build a funnel, but we did it live here in front of you so you can see what that looks like. There's no reason you can't do that for your customers. It's super fun. It's super easy. Talk to you soon.